you now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents and what a joy it is. For us to be with you once again. Amen. We have so many things we want to share with you. But first of all, I want you to see our brand new offer, The Future, an A to Z Index to Bible Prophecy. is a wonderful book written by Jack. And you can go to our website, jvim.com, or uh, also write to us, Jack Benefit Ministries, Box 704. Troy, Michigan, 48007. You need to have this offer. Also, Canada, Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. And let me just say this. If you would like to write to us a question, this is a question and answer uh, program. Write your questions. We'll be happy to answer them, not only on the program, but we will send you the answer in the mail. Now, we also have an 800 number, and if you would like to order this, your future A to Z Index to Prophecy. You know, that's the first thing I ever heard Jack preach. Prophecy. You love prophecy from the day I Let said Let me you tell it. you about it. I have studied prophecy. I've got every sign memorized, and there are hundreds of signs pointing to Christ's return, and they're all fulfilled. The last two have just been fulfilled. And it says when wow. the last two come, Christ returns. And uh, when the Holy Spirit came to me and said, you've been called by the Father to become the final prophet of history and to tell him Christ is about to return. He has chosen you because you've memorized this book and you know all the prophets. They're here. 400 of them. And for $20, man, you can see it all. A to Z. You train the letter. Which one is it? Uh, the Bible. Uh, Jerusalem. Uh, all these things. Wow. Amen. It's a gold bite, and I just hired a new man who's going to be my associate minister. And I said, I want you to memorize this because it covers every part of the Bible. Anything you can't understand, turn to it alphabetically, and you'll find it. Oh, yes. It's such a wonderful, wonderful book. Now, somebody came to me the other day. Oh, Rexella, I don't watch the news anymore. It is so depressing. I just can't watch the news anymore. Well, here's a headline. Is the world out of control or not? Maybe this is what she can't uh, stand watching anymore. And I'm going to read a few things that really signify the world is out of control. Muslim cleric. Embassy move a decoration of war. Okay. Of course, when our president moved our embassy to Jerusalem, oh, they said it was an, a decoration of war over there. Stay tuned. I'll be dealing with that. All right. The Iranian president, U.S. more hated than ever in the Muslim world. You know, uh, that really hurts my heart. Uh, Hamas wants to destroy us. We will act with determination. Now, that is, of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Once again, oh, my, oh, my, I can't believe this one. Israel, Hezbollah war is inevitable, sure to be devastating, the defense experts have to say. Israel, you know, a lot of things are going on in the Middle East, and we're going to talk about why that is so important in these last days. Israel prepared to use force to stop Iran from acquiring nukes. They said, ha, you can't stop us. We've already got it. Our military is more prepared than ever. What? For war. World War Three. Yes. Stay tuned. And from Myanmar to Zimbabwe, China's global footprint grows. Well, there's China. She's raising her head also. They're going to, they're going to join Russia for the greatest war in history yes, against us. I have a good headline here. U.S. Strategic Command observed Russia, China operating hypersonic missiles. Oh, my, oh, my. Russia, China, tighten ties with Iran, especially after our president did what yeah, he did. Iran, that's Persia, the uh, Old Testament, who joins with 
China and Russia. And China again sends fighter jets and bombers near Taiwan in latest show of force. And here, Russia China signs space exploration deal. They are buddies. Oh, it's going to be an atomic war. Yes. And here's another one. Pentagon intelligence chief. Russia and China will have weapons in space. Boy, that's Bible prophecy. Yes, in the near future. Now, here I have a question. And it's one that's very, very pertinent. Perilous times have come. It looks like we're heading, friends, for World War III. And I'm going to ask Jack, do you believe that we are headed for World War III, Jack? Sixty years ago, I began preaching in this world, the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible. And I gave the names of all the nations that would be involved from this prophetical book. That's all in this A and Z thing through. Boy, you'll really learn when you order that. But the thing is, we have come to that hour and people don't know it because they don't know their Bibles. And the Wall Street Journal just came out with an article that says, we are headed for a World War III in the very near future. And here are the nations that will be involved. I said, Rexello, look at this, look at this. It's what I've preached for 60 years in 50 nations of the world. It's about to happen. And it's when that happens that Christ comes to set up the kingdom the prayer of the ages used in our churches on Sunday mornings. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that happens when this war begins. For Armageddon is the closing scene as Christ comes to set up the glorious kingdom which lasts forever and forever. Yeah. Heaven will be transferred to earth. Man, you're going to be thrilled as you hear this. I'm going to make a video very soon. All right. If we're going to head it for World War I really have a good question here, and I, maybe it's going through your mind. If we're going to have another world war, will nuclear weapons be used? Oh, my, Jack, you think so? Oh, no doubt about it. In fact, there's a little prophecy in, in Isaiah 31.5. As the birds flying, so shall the Lord defend Jerusalem. Oh, How can birds do it? Drop, droppings on the head? <laughs> of course not. This is a picture of what is going on in space as they have all their bombers dropping their loads and missiles and atomic weaponry galore. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible predicts the greatest war in history as atomic. Are you listening? Psalm 97, 3, a fire goes before them. Isaiah 66, 15, the Lord will come with fire. Ezekiel 20, 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2, verse 3, a fire devours before the Russian army. And then Joel 2, 3, he says, there was fire, unbelievable masses of fire throughout the world. Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be burned by the fire of his jealousy. Malachi 4, 1, the day shall come that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, 7, the third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. On and on. It's coming. And the Bible teaches that 200 million will die and it will take seven months to bury the dead. Man, this book is here. I can't say it enough. Get that book of advertising. It's... Spells out everything I'm telling you today, plus many other things. Jack, do you believe this World War III will be called Armageddon? I mean, in. No, no. It will be uh, World War III. The closing scene is Armageddon, okay. Revelation 16 16. The closing scene yeah. is yeah. Armageddon. And that's when Christ comes and stops it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come, and, Jesus. And so this battle will be fought in Israel, the Valley of Megiddo. And, and it's going to last for how long? Seven years. Seven years. And Armageddon is that closing scene. And that is the hour when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And we've been talking about it for a couple thousand years. And people say, ah, that'll never happen. Hey, get ready. I just picked up a book that says, Awake America. Awake England. Awake world. Jesus is about to come. Every sign is here. Wow, he's right. Mm -hmm. 
And I tell you, I am setting up this new world organization to win every person they can to Christ before it's too late. It's going to be the greatest revival in history, and everyone who supports me will be called a missionary. You don't have to get ordained by a church. You have to do it to become a minister and to get a doctor's degree, but a missionary is one who carries out a mission. And if you send anything to me, I'll tell you what, as you're right, you will become a missionary to the largest missionary organization in history. I'll be preaching to every human being every week till God calls me home, once on radio, once on television. Twice. Seven billion, six hundred million reached twice a week. Oh, become a missionary. Write and ask us about it. All right, Jack, we're talking about World War Three. We have read uh, several mini headlines here for you. I wish we had time. To, I have dozens of them. We talked about Iran. We talked about uh, Russia, China, all of the nations in the north, Syria, coming down. Are those the countries that will go together to come down against Israel? Oh, Rexella, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God wrote every word in here. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And there's three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's the job of the Holy Spirit to put this book together. I'm going to shock you. Do you know that many of you are anti-Semitic and you hate Jews, and that's why everybody's going to try to destroy the Jew? This is not a King James Version. This is not a Doye Version. This is a Jewish version from cover to cover. What? 39 Old Testament books, all Jewish prophets. Right. The New Testament, 11 of the 12 Christian disciples were Jews who found Jesus. There's only one guy who's not a Jew that had anything to do with his Bible, and he was a Greek. Luke. And he wrote Luke and Acts. 66 books, 64 written by Jews, and that's why they're so hated. God loves the Jew. I love the Jew. I will stand for the Jew. My uncle Franz in Belgium died for the Jew and was beheaded. And I thought, I think that has touched my heart. I love you, Israel. God says, I did not choose you, Israel, because you're more in number than any other number. You're the fewest. But I loved you, Israel. Now, listen to God. Israel's the apple of mine eye. Israel is my fiance, my betrothed. Israel is my wife. Jeremiah 3.14. And I will give Israel an everlasting name. And we've got Protestants now that say, God is through with the Jew forever. It's called replacement theology. My own denomination is starting it. I have nothing to do with them anymore. When you say that God is through with the Jew, you're so ignorant of the Bible, you hate the Jews so much, it just can't see straight. I will give Israel an everlasting name. Who says so? God, what are you preachers saying? No. He's through with them forever. And every time you come across the word Israel, you put in its place the church. And every time you put, see the word Jerusalem, you call it heaven. Bunk! That's trash. True. Don't interpret God's word in that way. And you folks that are in those churches, find another one. Or join my missionary organization because we're going to stand for Israel. We're going to stand. The kingdom is coming and it's going to be the Judea Christian New World Order and religion. Write me. I'm going to get all the information I got that's going to 800 rabbis, 16,000 priests, and every Protestant minister in all American Canada. I mean business. You're going to see the greatest Holy Ghost revival in this world soon under this ministry, Van Impies. And every dime you sent, I'll never use a thing for cars and planes and can imagine jets, you dirty hypocrites. The love of his money is the root of all evil, in which while some coveted after the heir from the faith. My promise to every one of you, from this hour on, I'll not use one dime you sent for anything but getting the gospel 
to the whole world through radio and television. It's going to cost me $10 million a year. And ladies and gentlemen, our goal is not just to reach them, it's to win them to Jesus. You can become the greatest soul winners if you stand with us. And we don't want million dollar homes or anything else. I even drive a 11 year, year old car right now. I'm going to drive it until Jesus calls me home. <laughs> well, I want to get back to something here, though, Jack. There were some names, and uh, you always quote the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the reason that people respect him as uh, a prophet, as one who really knows prophecy. The Bible answers every question that we have. It talked about Russia, it talked about China, and the, the, the nations north of Israel. Now, I've heard you preach this before. But Ezekiel 38 makes it very, very clear, doesn't it? Oh, that Russia's going to be involved. Ezekiel 38. And remember, this was just in the headlines of the Wall Street Journal. And I said, Rexella, I've preached that message in 50 nations of the world. And it been right on. You want to hear Ezekiel 38? The word of the Lord he came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And then they have the eastern armies of Revelation 16, China, and all the rest. Now, who are all these people? First of all, you have Gog. That's the guy who heads up Russia. It could be Putin. He's there right now. This may be the one. I'm going to say something to you, Trump. I love you. But be careful, careful as you run. try to get together with Russia. You're going against God's. And I think Pence, who's your vice president, knows that. Be careful. All right. How do we know it's Russia? The word chief there is the Hebrew word for Rosh. Russia. English, Russia. The prince of who? Magog. Meshach. Tubal. Meshach is Moscow. Tubal is Tubal, southwest of Siberia. You get down to verse 5, Persia is on their side. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, Egypt, all those countries. What? Persia changed its name in 1932 to Iran. Syria, all the... It's all there. You're seeing it in your headlines every day. We're getting ready for the worst war in history. And then the Bible teaches that there are going to be 57 Muslim nations all coming down with armies of 200 million to wipe Israel off the face of the map with those atoms we quoted earlier. They're not going to make it. Sorry. Four Sharia laws. Number one, you kill your daughter if she commits adultery. Number two, you kill your son if he does a homosexual act, and all homosexuals put him dead. Number three, you kill all apostates. That's our own members of our own churches. If they say one word against Allah, Muhammad, or the Quran. Number four, you kill everyone in every religion, 1,600 different cults, and 4,500, all dead, including the Jews and the Christians. And what happens? We go home to heaven, and we get 72 virgins. Oh, my. Just to make love, love, sex. Mm -hmm. What kind of religion is that? And you're going to get mad at me for preaching it? Don't worry, I've got my house guarded. I have to, but I'll never stop. That's the truth. Look it up, Sharia law. Thank God for the Ten Commandments. Sharia law is all murder. And for murder, you get to make sex in heaven forever. In heaven! No adulterer, my Bible says, can enter heaven. Get your Ten Commandments and forget Sharia law. All right, Jack. Now, there's a tremendously strong army coming down from the north to invade Israel. Israel's not just going to stand alone, is she? 
Aren't there going to be countries that will help her also? In fact, the United States, uh, all of Europe, we kind of fill us in on that. Tarshish and our lands. Those are the English-speaking nations of the world. America, Canada, England, Ireland, Scotland. And then there's the European Union, the five, ten nations now with their flags hanging in Brussels bells. And praise God, that's my father's home country. And they're all going to join together to defend this precious people, the Jews. And God says, I am on their side. They are my beloved. I said it, I repeat, Israel is my wife. And you know, the Apostle Paul was a Jew who became a Christian. And guess what he said? I love the Jews so much. Boy, this shakes me. Romans 9. I could say the truth in Christ. I, not, I would be willing to get my body accursed, accursed from Christ, lost forever. In the fires of hell. If it could be that my precious people, the Jews, could be saved. He said the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. But he says the message of the gospel is for the Jew first. And there I stand. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is about to come back. He comes at the battle of Armageddon. Hey, you Christians are going to be here. Don't worry about it. I will keep you from, that's the Greek word, ek, out of the hour of testing that comes on the whole world with this atomic war and keep you safe. How? The resurrection of the dead. Oh, I hear these guys saying, I don't believe in the rapture. Do you believe in the resurrection? Oh, of course. No, you don't. You call yourself a mystery. You don't know your Bible better than that. There are only two verses in the Bible that speak about the resurrection of the dead. They're both rapture texts. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all be dead sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we the living shall be changed. This corruptible, the dead must put on incorruption. This mortal living must put on immortality. And when the corruptible is put on incorruption, the new body and the mortal is put on immortality, a body that lives forever and ever, and now they can never die again. He comes down and sets up heaven and earth, and it's called the kingdom of the kingdom prayer. Thy kingdom come as with. Take God be power, glory forever, forever, uh, forever. He transfers heaven to earth. That's what the kingdom is, and that's. And guess who's going to be the prime heir? That no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. The one who I'm a Jewish mother. The father says, "I'm going to send my son into the world." First John four fourteen. Holy Spirit, perform a miracle. Place the spirit of my son into the womb of the Virgin Mary. He's called God. In her womb, he was called Emmanuel. Being interpreted as God with him. You can't get any plainer. Yes, God. Yes. Mary bore God. He was a spirit. All three of them were. One said, I'll take a body. Because without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. All Jews and Christians who died till that time were sent to Hades because their sins were only covered. Kafir. And it said, a blood of animal can't do it. It's possible the blood of animals can take away sin. Only cover them. Jesus said, I'm going to go. I'm going to take a body. And I will take away sin. And as he shed there, and the blood was flowing down his veins, he said, one word, Palestine! Not it is finished. One word, the finished what? The work to get them out of Hades and yeah. take them to the third heaven, millions of miles in space. And they're going to stay there until my son comes back to set up the kingdom on earth. And Jesus in that kingdom will be the king of the kings and the lord of the lords. And that is the rapture that Anybody says they don't believe in the rapture, you get out of the church. These birds don't know their Bible. They've been reading too many pornographic books. I'm, I'm going to preach. I don't care who gets mad at me. Pit 
bold man and be, amen. I'm going to preach it like it is because there are too many of you cream puffs that aren't preaching anything. we got too many of these churches. First church of the deep freeze pastored by Dr. Jack Frost. Not this Jack. They call me Pip Bull Van B. Amen. But I'll see you in heaven because you've heard my preaching and you've done something about it. The greatest war is about to happen. We won't be here. We're gone. We're there for seven years. We return. He sets up the kingdom. And that is heaven transferred to earth forever and forever and forever. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. How long? Forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Never will. And now the second death has no more power. We all come back with our new bodies. No one will ever be able to die again because the spirit and human beings can never die. And that's what I'm going to be telling you about abortion next week. Those little babies never died. That spirit lives forever. And you put them to death. Come on. Tune in. All right. Yes, tune in. You know, the lady who said, I can't watch TV anymore because of the bad news. We well, actually, the bad news, as Jack presented it today, and as you heard the headlines, is pointing to good news, the coming of the Lord. But are you ready? We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord because the Lord will come into our hearts. He'll cleanse us of every sin. If only you'll invite him to be your Savior. Jack, our time is gone. Will you pray that wonderful prayer, asking the Lord to be the Savior of all those watching right now or listening right now to invite him into their hearts. In my book, you'll be ordering, the blood is mentioned 400 times. The only way is salvation, the blood of Jesus. Without the blood of Jesus, no one could ever be to heaven or go to heaven. He died. Amen. That blood was shed for you. And we're ready to go. But then we come back and live here on earth forever and forever and forever. The world's going to never end. These guys, 10 of them who preach the end of the world, baloney. My new video's coming out. The lie of the end of the world preaching. Never going to end. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your cross, Jesus. Thank you for your precious, holy blood. And you took a body because you were only a spirit but you couldn't materialize and the body was so you could take blood for without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Amen. and I accept what you did come into my heart now save me in your holy name Jesus Amen oh yes Amen if you pray that prayer please write to me and, of course, that's Jack Van Empey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Or Canada, Jack Van Empey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. And I will send you this wonderful little book of First Steps in a New Direction. And if you have questions about what Jack's been talking about today, write the questions and we'll answer those questions for you. Oh my, oh my. I can't believe our time is gone. But I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. Jesus took my place on the cross to give me a place in heaven. We we'll look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.